welcome back to Deb Tricks of the Trade. And today we have Oliver. And as you can see, he's a puppy. And this is puppy's very first time at the grooming shop with Mr. Clipper and Mr. Toenail Dremel Driller. And all new environment. He showed up about an hour ago. We walked him in the backyard, gave him some water, let him settle in, let him look around. And you know, it's a male springer. He came here with its mother and sat on its mother's lap the whole time. Trust me. Right. It doesn't care about anything else. It had everything in the world that it wanted, except for, you know, maybe something to chew on. So what we're gonna do today is two things. Okay. Two things. Okay. Number one is how to introduce a puppy to all the grooming equipment. That's very important. Number three things. Number two, table training. What do I mean by that? Table training. That's when you teach your dog how to behave properly and how to have the proper manners and cooperate with you as a team, as a team on the grooming table. That is your biggest issue. Um, for years and years and years here, here at Best in Show, I actually ran a grooming school one-on-one. -on -one grooming school and I had the girls make their own grooming notebooks and on page one was the hardest thing about dog grooming is not learning to groom the dog it's learning to control the dog so I said don't get out your pens and pa paper but for that one you should and I'll even put it on the introduction of this so it's in writing the hardest thing about dog grooming is not the dog grooming. It's learning how to control the dog. And I don't mean in a mean sense, I mean in a cooperative, nice sense, where most, I've never met a show dog that didn't love the grooming table and love being up on the grooming table. Hell, Connor, 13 years he lived on the grooming table. If I had him here at the shop, I had a grooming table back here, and he lived on the grooming table 24-7. That's where he wanted to be. My bitches, of course, were over there on the easy boy chairs, of course. Nope, nope, Connor came into the grooming shop, put his front two feet up on that grooming table, and had his towel, and that's where he would hang out all day. And he did it at the dog shows too. So I've never met any Springer, any show dog that didn't love the grooming table. But a lot of that has to do with how you introduce them to it, how you train them, how you are with them. But it's their special time with you. Denise wants to learn how to groom Oliver at home. So, in the mix of all that, I'm going to be teaching her that. But she's not going to leave Debbie's dog grooming until... I won't care so much if she's taught, if she has learned. She won't leave here until this puppy has learned. Until this puppy has understood every piece of equipment and this puppy is table trained, cooperative, calm, settled, and loves it. At that point, I will feel good about handing Oliver back over to her to groom at her house. Sound fair? Yeah. And she's got my YouTube channel, and I'm going to clue her into all the equipment, just like I have everybody that watches. So we're going to get started today, and it is a nasty, nasty hot day. I got air conditioners blowing in here. I'm still dying. I said, Kira, what do you got done with that schnauzer? Yes, I'm done. Um, I didn't know if you wanted me to finish his face. His face? No, don't do his face. Just bring him back out here okay. to his crate. Put him away. Because I am going to have to take breaks with this puppy as we go. Okay, so here's Oliver. Now, Oliver was bought as a wonderful companion. Mm -hmm. yep. So we don't have to worry about putting him into a show trim but she certainly wants him to look like a show dog all right I'm gonna push this whole thing back just keep your hands on him this way too far out for me you good yeah as I remodel the entire grooming shop here on this video all right so, as you know, we've got the two different types of clippers, okay? So the first thing you do, and I've shown everybody this before, with these clippers, 
and then this this goes in there to the little end then you snap it shut then you turn it on and do it again make sure it's on on so we have this clipper they all make noise they all make noise they all vibrate they are all things that Oliver is unaccustomed to. So I have the clipper on. Okay. So you take the clipper. Now if you are raising a show puppy and the breeder or handler is going to be doing the show work, I would still recommend getting a used or a second hand or even a clipper for yourself. And when you have your puppy up on the table to do toenail, which every handler is going to require you to do, that this be part of the training with the puppy. So along with the brushing and the combing, just buy your wah, the cordless, because that's, well, the puppy's actually reacting far less, which I have always found to be true with the cordless clippers, keep that in mind. Good boy, my goodness. Remember, do not leave your equipment on the table where the dog can bump it off. So it's really the stuff that makes noise that's gonna be the biggest issue. Oh my God, did you see that? Turn on the Dremel, that has a very high pitch to it. Remember, dogs are gonna hear things way different then you and I are going to hear things. So I'm glad that the Dremel is not up around this puppy's face. But while I have it going. Now this puppy's toenails are naturally short because they haven't had a lot of time to grow out. So I'm not going to worry about that whole making a pencil thing. Especially since this is his first groom. I'm just going over the front to get the white. I'm just going over the front of the nail to get quote unquote, you know, the white part of the toenail. We all know that little white part. I don't know if you can see it here. I've got two or three different videos on how to use the Dremel properly when doing toenails. Go back to my YouTube channel, find them. This is just a quick way to introduce a puppy the very first time to all this equipment. So I'm not going to go through the whole, all the different steps that you might normally go through when you're using the Dremel on the nails. Right. So, yes. Now the other thing, what other piece of equipment So, what other piece of equipment do you guys see here that you haven't seen before in my tapes? We have Mr. Brush, Mr. Home, the two clippers, the blades, the Dremel, the scissors. Denise! Now, she is not going to be on the Amazon or Cherry Brook list link to buy her when you're getting your grooming equipment. So, you're either going to have to borrow or rent a friend, okay, or talk to your husband in a real sweet way, or vice versa, the hubby's doing the work, then your wife, and have a second person with a puppy. Without doubt. I don't care if you have to rent somebody off the street, okay? You shouldn't have the puppy up on the grooming table with all of this new equipment in this whole new process without a second person. There's no way you're going to be able to grapple and deal with positioning the puppy and keeping him standing and letting him understand and more importantly to give him comfort i walked away good boy good boy right away denise right he's got to associate this whole process with being with, with being loved okay uh being in a caring situation and also to like it right he shouldn't be afraid there should be no fear factor okay this isn't reality tv well it is reality TV, but it's not that kind of reality TV. So 
No fear factory. Okay, with grimy dogs. None, 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 none. All right, so we've done that. Now, because he's a puppy and he feels like he wants to lay down, I'm going to get Mr. Clipper here that is cordless. Please, please, please just bite the bullet and get yourself a cordless clipper to work around the dog's feet. And again, I've got two or three different pet grooming videos on my YouTube channel, complete in their entirety. Go there to watch all this stuff up close because the main theme for this video today is how to handle a puppy the first time on the grooming table, how to teach them to be table trained, how to introduce them to the equipment. So uh, this really isn't about grooming, although I'm going to be grooming. So I'm not going to go into all this detail about what I'm doing, what blades I'm using, all of that. Please go to my other pet grooming videos and you'll see all of this. So since Puppy was laying down and was very happy laying down, he already had a scary experience with Mr. Clippers and Mr. Dremels because they make funny noise. So I wasn't really going to demand too much of him after that, but so y'all don't let a really good opportunity slide by deal. So he's laying down and giving me good view of the pads of his feet. Okay, now from this point forward though, I hate to tell Mr. Oliver that he's going to have to start attending class. So, remember, a noose is not to string them up. A noose is to give them balance. Balance. I don't know, have you ever tried to edit something and there's this button that says recenter? Uh -huh. Right? Okay, well that's what this is to the dog. So if you, if you spin the table, if you walk away, if you move him in an odd direction, his reset for balancing on this table is this. That's what it's used for. So, you know, you never, never, never have them up like that. You have them so that when they're standing, they're slack. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Two, three fingers, right. It's just for balance. So, but it's also something that he needs to get used to. So, the other thing too, on the grooming table, they've got to learn to stand. I don't care if it's a show puppy, I don't care if it's a pe pet dog, they've just got to learn to stand. So another reason to have a second person is that you can't constantly be standing them and using your two hands for grooming. It's just not possible. Now, the other thing, moms and dads, this is the classroom right here. This is the classroom. Okay? No mommy, mommy, ootsie, ootsie when they're in the classroom. That's saved for after. Uh, first grade teachers, if they mommy, mommy, ootsie, ootsie that class, there would be bedlam. All right? They're not mean to the kids, but they're just matter of fact. And there is a certain sense of discipline in the classroom for those kids to be sitting still, paying attention, doing the work they need to do. Same thing here, especially with a male springer. You start to do the mommy, mommy, ootsie, ootsie, and they're gonna use that all against you. They're gonna have you wrapped around their little finger. The bitches will do it too, trust me. So, so while they're up here, no, mommy, mommy, ootsie, ootsie. If they get afraid with something, yes, a calming voice, like it's all right, it's okay, stay, stand, but nothing that's a mommy, mommy, ootsie, ootsie thing. So, just because it's convenient and I'm here. Okay, now what I want you to do, I want him to learn to stand. Okay. So, there are these apparatuses that you can buy that actually hold these dogs up like this. You see, I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Right, so, yes, have him stand with the least amount of effort on your part. Okay so that he learns, okay, to stand. 
And again, I'm not going to be doing anybody who's used to my grooming or my grooming videos as I'm doing things. You will certainly have an eye and be able to pick up maybe something new that I'm doing. When I learned dog grooming, it was professional dog show handlers. I never had an instructor in my life. I was told to stand there, shut up, and watch. And not get in the way. So I learned all my professional dog show grooming from standing and watching the great experts. So in that same way, my little audience out there can certainly learn from watching what I'm doing. Although when I'm really doing the videos, I'm giving a lot of verbal instruction. It's not going to do it. This is a pet puppy, but still, I don't want to massacre these hawks. Okay, never, never, never. I can't think of any, unless the puppy has surgery back there, I can't think of any reason ever to take all that hair off their hocks. Ever. Ever. Okay. Well, with my adult dogs, you have seen me take clippers under here, which is true, but there's really no reason to get him upset with the clippers yet. So on a puppy, I am gonna do this section just with the scissors that are in my hand. Remember, never take the palm of your hand and get the hair off your table. You're going to get hairs embedded in your hands and you're going to end up at the hospital. Look it up. Google it. Wikipedia. Encyclopedia. It's called Barber something. B-A-R-B-E-R. -E Barbers get them all the time in their hands. I actually had it happen once. And let me tell you, it is extremely unpleasant okay so thinking about it I can't think of a whole lot more to do with just the scissors and again well puppy is wanting to take his teeth and kind of lick me that's okay I don't mind that he can lick me and there may be a time today when he wants to be a little bit more aggressive because he's afraid of the louder equipment, especially if we get up around his face. But again, the whole reason for this video today is to show you what do you do? I mean, last thing you want to do is train a male Springer that it's okay to bite at the clipper when you're using it on him. So it should never be okay from the first day to age 13 and a half. But we shall see what he does. And again, all these little things that I'm doing around his feet. Wait, you want to chew my glasses? Huh? You want to chew my glasses? Oops. You know what? We should have a jar, a quarter jar. And anytime, uh, anytime somebody does a mommy mom you see you see we owe the jar a dollar <laughs> okay because that would have been my dollar right there do as I say don't do as I do <laughs> God you've got a male springer up on my table don't tell me I can't mommy mommy it's see it's him God it goes against everything in my soul okay Zakira where are you at what are you doing is she next is who next uh, the board oh yeah yeah let's get them and do you have a brush back there yes I do. go for it she's stinky smelly <laughs> all right well that wasn't a mommy mommy etsy etsy that was a little respite that was a little interlude before i went to other things right, okay let him sit for a minute okay because i'm thinking right 
You can't be on automatic. Now when he's sitting, this thing gets tighter. Okay, well now here's the hard part. I'm at a point where I'm gonna have to use Mr. Clipper. So, okay. You just be there so he doesn't back up off the table. Okay. Okay? And he's just gonna have to learn to deal with it and let's see what we got. Good boy. Look at that, what was that? That Mr. Clipper see? Yeah, that's Mr. Clipper. Mm -hmm. Wow. Gonna make you look pretty. Gotta be brave. Come on. Oh, go puppy. Gotta be so brave. Oh my. Scary. Wow, be brave. him to get a sense of balance and him to get the sense that he's on the grooming table. I want you there so he doesn't back off okay. the grooming table and fall off the grooming table. And again, the way I'm holding this ear is extremely important. Always to have a flat, smooth surface, tight surface to work on. Please go to my pet grooming videos and watch it in detail. I show you, I explain it. I cannot stop and do that today because I've got to get this done ASA, ASAP. This puppy isn't going to stand here for a lot of instruction. And like I said, this video is really about how to introduce this puppy to this more than it is the actual grooming. But for all of you who have been watching, my grooming, everything that I'm doing, you would go, oh, there she is, she's doing that trick. Oh, there she is, she's doing that again. Huh. There. Every single thing that I do to an adult Springer in pet grooming, I'm going to do to this dog. There's that little flap. Where are your fingers? Where are your magic fingers? on that flap. Where's that flap? Under my thumb. Now I'm going to be, am I going to be real, real stern about him being champion show dog and just standing there? No. He's going to have some loose puppy freedoms here. And yes, I am going to go to him as much as he is going to go to me. Going to kind of meet in the middle. Now, I'm not holding his mouth shut because he's panting. God, don't do that to any of them. Even if you have an adult dog up on the table. Stop. Hey, hey. I'm trying to get that flat, smooth surface here. And the way I'm doing it, at least on this puppy, is by pulling both ears back and all this loose skin, which all puppies have, I'm pulling back as tight as places. It do, doesn't hurt this dog. It's quite, trust me, if I was hurting this dog, you'd be hearing about it. He'd be screaming and carrying on, ranting and raving. This does not in any way hurt him. As a matter of fact, leaving all this loose skin while you're working with a sharp clipper around him is going to hurt him because you're going to end up cutting the dog. So, again, tight, flat surface. I'm sure I just made a big clipper mark there because I hear the clippers go rah, rah, rah. oh well we'll have to live with the clipper mark they are going to move when you don't want them to move that is what puppies do now look I left the eyebrows it can still be a springer trim here's your corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth okay ear under ear under the exact same lines that I've been teaching everybody in all of the videos. The head is identical for pet grooming and show grooming. Identical. The feet are identical. 
unless you're doing that uh, corrective where you're taking a big flat ugly foot and making it the model of perfection for the slow show ring great but feet the head everything about a pet groom is identical the pattern that you use the outlines that you use of course how you treat the top coat on a pet versus a show there be the rub there be the difference so I'm going to give him back his sense of balance. Okay. Now we're going to do this guy again. Please don't do any of this grooming without going to my grooming tapes first. Please. Because I'm not explaining or teaching anything today about how to handle the equipment, where to cut, where not to cut, how to cut. I'm not cut because today is all about Oliver. There I am going off the side of the ear. Never run the clipper along the ear leather. Yep. I'm going to make him go through everything that I normally would for any. Any dog, any sprinter. All right, now how hot is he? It's starting to get real blistering hot out there. Do you want um, this puppy coat to stay on or do you want me to take some of it off now so that he can be cooler? Thank yeah, thank you. Okay, I was going to suggest that, but no. All right, so we've got one of three flip, well, four. You've got a seven, five, and a four. Those are your three for top coat work. Seven, five, four. Looking at this puppy, I'm not even going to try a four because it won't take anything off. All right, so I'm going to start with the seven. And these should not be where he can bump them off onto the floor. Okay. Start with a seven. And I've even shown you guys this on my pet trims. Well, even a little bit on my show trims, I always take a 7F down this line on the neck. All right, well, he's got to get used to it, so turn him around. Again, I am not holding his mouth shut, ladies and gentlemen. It's hot. So, okay, here's my 7F, and I'm moving with the grain of the hair. However, the hair is growing, hair, hair is growing this direction here, so I'm not going to go like this. So, here, so I went from a 9 blade on the top of his head off of his back skull to a seven. So essentially, you don't see a clearly defined clipper mark of where one starts, one begins. No, no, no. So there's my seven. Now I'm going to go to my five. Oh, look. Uh, okay, that's that's too cute. That's too cute. That's too cute. That's too cute. He says, no, nope, I'm not in the for mommy, mommy, or tootsie. I know what you're doing to me, you crazy lady, but you ain't my mom. Okay, balance. And that's good, Denise. Don't don't let his full body up against yours. Okay. You're, you, wait, watch her. She's, she's perfect. Okay? So, if you could see, there's all this space between her and that puppy. That puppy isn't slammed up against her body. She's letting him stand on his own. That is very important. She's there to give him the reassurance. 
I mean, when I have new clients with puppies, I try to schedule them to please come and be with your dog and hold it until I get it table trained. This is a 5F, and I am doing exactly what I did on Kira back in April. I'm doing the exact same thing that I did with Noah. That was my real big from scratch. Heck with me, DVD. Yeah, you can see like yucky lines and clipper marks. Don't worry about it. Don't try to get them out with your clipper. It'll never work and you'll just keep making it worse and worse. We're going to come back with a finish here and quote unquote fix all that. Okay. A little bit of a break. God, I love the way this air conditioner just blows all this hair around. Oh. See, cleaning up this shop is going to be a lot of fun. Right? Trip over my microphone. All right, let's spin around. Okay, Mom, back there. Okay, here we go. I have no idea how this microphone's working, but I guess I'll find out when I go up tonight to edit it. Okay, I'm gonna try to get him, yeah, to stand better than a hunch over something. I have the five, on like an airplane, off like an airplane. I'm actually running it over where I had the seven to begin with so that I can come in to where I really want to groom with the five pressing. He's more interesting in lick, licking my zipper than what I'm doing, doing. Now, I think you found my microphone. <laughs> okay, if anybody heard something odd there for a moment. That was Oliver turning microphone into play toy. And you have to admit, it looks like a play toy. Okay, up. Oh, now, Mom, okay, I'm going to teach you something. He's out of the news, so what you're going to do is you're just going to give him a bridge with your hand. Okay. Don't. He can still open up his mouth. Okay. Because even with show grooming, that is something that he's going to have to learn, is to be out of the news and having someone give him a bridge for his head. He also is going to have to, have to learn that in the show ring when he's set up. So all of these activities can all be taught simultaneously at the same time. One activity just leads into the next, leads into the next, leads into the next. Okay, I've got my hand under here, literally, I got a, I got him, I got a hold of his peck off. Very nice, very nice. I have a hold of it, but that is the best way for him to be very, very still. Because number one, if I'm nicely holding it, it's a very calming thing for him, and he will be still. On the girls, you're just going to have to put your hand up there and maybe position your palm in such a way in the center of the belly. Or grab something. There's a lot of loose skin under here, too. It's not just all pepper. Whoop. And that's okay. He needs to learn the edge of the table. He needs to understand how big his little world is when he's up here. Okay? Now we're going to get hair off again as it flies into the air. Ah! Gross! Double gross! Triple gross!
Now the other thing is with the puppy, I would not do the grooming and the bathing on the same day. Right. I d it's too much. Right, right. There's no reason to just either that the day before, that day after, separate the two events. And first of all, what he's learning here has nothing to do with the bathtub. Mm -hmm. So I don't want him to have mixed signals mm -hmm. and mixed memories. This is what it is. And then the bathtub experience is a whole second thing. So now, of course, with an adult dog, we would expect them to go from the grooming table to the bathtub. But <coughs> on a puppy, I just like, right? I would like to keep the two things separate. So there are those natural marks where the clipper just left his body to go into thin air. Okay, spin him around. Spin him around. No, yeah, the dog, not the table. Oh, yeah, there you go. See, train puppy, train owner, it's all the same. Stop. Okay, I'm going to pull this up. Because this is something pet owners could probably use too. So, this is where the clipper came off the body. And I don't know if you can really see it. So, you take the thinning shear in the same direction as the hair grows. So, this matches the direction that the hair grows. Yeah, just don't, let, let him let him pant. But here, grab this nicely, not tight, not to where he objects, and then that'll just keep his head not looking at me. So yes, even with a pet trim, you can still take your thinning shears and run it over the top, and that will smooth any of the dips, valleys, marks from the clipper. This puppy was wiggling the whole time I groomed him, so every time he wiggles, the clipper's going to leave like a mark, mark, mark. But again, when you're doing this, and you're using the thinning shear, here's the blade of the thinning shear, okay, needs to match the direction the hair's growing. It's growing that way, here it's growing this way, here it's growing this way, it's coming off here, here, it's growing this way. So however the hair is growing on that particular dog, that is the direction you, you, you use blah, the blade of your scissor. Okay, well, just those few little swipes. If you picked it up on film, any of those places, quote unquote, where there were some marks made by the clipper being juggled are now all gone. Now, what I do want to do here though, step more towards his head. Yes. All right, this big patch of I'm leaving my cell phone people behind. Sorry guys. All right, so, you know, all of our springers, when you pick up their tail, they all have this poof of something hanging out. Okay. Well, the pet dogs don't need it. Show dogs, you want to get it off of there. But, you know, the pets don't need it either. If I have time and energy this week, I have Kira. She just came out of the bathtub with her soaking pantene bath. She's in her show towel. And we are going to do some more pumice work. And guess what, folks? Let's look at our calendar. But from when I shaved her off with a five blade, she is now ready to go into the specialty. A specialty class or a specialty best of breed ring with the top coat she grew back. We are at that point, I'm glad, because she is dying of the heat. So the minute I get at least one side of her done for you guys, I'm taking the clipper and shaving her off again. All right, so. 
Now, if you took a magnifying glass up against what I just did, you would not see anything that looked unnatural. This looks like that that is exactly the way the hair grew. And if you read our breed standard, in essence, that is exactly what you're trying to go for when you're grooming a show dog. Is that, yes, we want to make them neat and tidy. Yes, of course, every judge in the world expects the neatness and tidiness around the headpiece and the feet. But, the but, is that whatever we do, it needs to give that appearance of being natural. It's another reason why I'm not a fan of that carved out underline that we are now doing. I've been doing pet dogs as long as I've been doing show dogs. And I did that to pets 50 years ago. And now suddenly we're doing it show dogs. I don't like it. We're doing it. Okay. I'll teach you how. I have. I have videos on it. But I'm just not, I'm not crazy about it. But it is what it is. All right, so even for a little pet boy here, mom, watch your fingers. <coughs> now, I could have never had the control over this puppy that I had had I not had a second pair of hands here. And, and I, when we started, I told her to do the least amount that she could to uh, now when we first started and you can rewind this okay <coughs> when we first started this puppy he was smashed up against her body and little by little I said let him find his own balance now look look other than wanting to know where mom went okay right just in that first lesson only. Okay, this puppy, look, look. I can even stack this dog. Now, Mom, go, go to the front of his face. Don't talk to him, just walk around the front so you can see where you are. Yeah, okay, well look. Now, after that, I can even stack this puppy for the show ring. Stop, stop. Which would be then another lesson on the grooming table. Now, as we all know, we breed these champion sires and dams. We have six, seven, eight puppies. We can't, we don't have eight show homes. Just never works that way. So this puppy's lovely. He could absolutely be shown. He can absolutely win his championship. He's got a nice scissor bite now, but we'll follow that. And I would assume he's not neutered yet. <laughs> but of course he could be shown. But you know what, even for a pet, it's not a bad idea. Could you take that cell phone and turn it so everybody could see? There you go. That's good. Even for a, even for a pet, it's not bad for them to learn. Stand. Stand. I just have my hand under here. I'm not doing anything. Okay. And I have my hand here. Like diapers on this bridge. Stand. He's getting fed up now. I'm not going to teach him to sit on the grooming table or lay down on the grooming table yet. Yet. There can come a time for that, especially if it's a show dog. But pets, standing is good. Okay, right, I'd say we're done. Okay, right, now he's gonna learn how to do this quicker than you're gonna learn how to do this. <laughs> Let me slide in here. Again, my my eye drops, okay? This is colloidal silver made for eyes, right? Oh, this is a good one. Oh, I have a good one now. I've been trying to show you this, guys, on my dark liver bitches that don't have this bright red hall. Was his siren damn liver? Mm -hmm. Mother and father liver? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. So, right. You guys out there breeding liver to liver and then continue to breeding liver to liver to liver okay you are going to end up with these red hauls okay especially if allergy season now my two liver bitches troy and kira that i've been working with they just don't get it okay but i i don't breed liver to liver two generations in a row 
if I breed liver to liver, and that's only because I love the two dogs involved, I always go back and then do a liver black. So I don't have a pigment problem. I always have dark liver coat, and I don't get red holes. So this is not Visine. Throw it away. You're killing your eyeballs. Okay. So this is very nice. Stop. I'll tell you all about this stuff and where to get it. To make it easy, I took a visine dropper and washed it out. This can never touch water. So if you do do that, wash it out, let it dry for like days and days, and then fill it up with the product. Because I keep this in my tap box too. <coughs> so I'm just going to have him up here on the table long enough to show everybody. Because I have done the videos on how to get ready for the dog shows. And here we are at the hotel. So, you know, first thing in the morning, if you have a dog that has a red haul, if it's just seasonal allergies or if you're going into an indoor building at dog shows, there's dust and there's powder and there's hairspray and this, but 10 times worse. Okay, and I'm sorry, but even a dog with a perfect eye can get that red haul and have their eyes irritated. How my eyes get irritated at some of the dog shows. So what I tell people to do is the first first thing in the morning when the dog goes potty outside, put a drop in, you get to the dog show, you take your dog out of the truck, you let it go potty, mm -hmm. right? About three times between the time that you're working, starting to work on the dog to when you go in the show ring, I would put a drop three different times. Now here around the day, you can put one in the morning, one at night, twice a day. It, right, it can't hurt them. Every day? Every day, right. I have one of these down here and one up at the house. So when I'm looking across the room, and I just, I don't see the red hole on my dogs, but they, you know, they do this kind of thing. Yeah. You know, they're not relaxed with their eye open. So, and so I, I just read their body language and I go get this and I do them while they're just half asleep on the couch okay. and I walk away and it's soothing. It's, you, you can use it. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, I can already see a huge improvement. Look, just in that little time. Look, yeah, yeah, just absolutely. in that little time. And this was just the first. Yeah. If I were getting him ready for the dog show, I would have done it, taken him out to pee, brought him back, done a little bit. You know, I, I, I you know, tried to do this three times okay. in the course of me getting him ready for the dog show. But by the time he went into the dog show, there would be no red hall. And look, already, it's nearly gone. Right, you can see that. Oh, yeah. Okay, come here and hold his head real quick because I want to show everybody something else. If I can. Give me a minute. Mr. Oh, All right, this is something I also tried to show you guys before, but couldn't, because both of my bitches have very dark pigment. This puppy does not, but again, it's a liver bred to li liver. I'd have to look at the pedigree, but it certainly wouldn't surprise me if it was liver bred to liver, bred to liver, bred to liver, bred to liver, because I'm looking at the pigment, okay? Right, Everybody, every dog has its fault. I'm not here to be mean, all right? But the color of this puppy's nose should match the color of his coat. It doesn't, it's lighter. Would that stop him from getting his championship? Of course not. <coughs> I mean, in the world of things, that's a, a minor consideration. Is this gonna stop him from smelling the bird? No. Is it gonna stop him from finding the bird? No. From picking up the bird? No. Bringing the bird back to me and releasing it in my hand? No. Jumping in the water, finding the bird, bringing it back to me? No. So when you're reading these breed standards, read the standard and try to breed the most perfect dog you can to the breed standard so that we don't lose the ideal Springer. So that we don't lose the characteristics that make a Springer a Springer. So that we don't lose the ability to make the number one Springer in the country be a great show dog because it's so nearly perfect to the breed standard. So let's not lose that. But at the same time, if you're, if you're 
judging class dogs, one, two, three, four, and you're just trying to get a championship on a dog. Like, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. All right, so there's nothing I would do about that. There's nothing I would do about it. As a regular class dog, I could absolutely positively finish this dog. Right, right, not a problem. So now I talked about the eye rims. So when you have a light colored nose, you are also going to have light colored eye rims. That's just part of the pigment. So I don't know if little Oliver's going to be cooperative. And he's about had it anyway. I really didn't expect him to be one of my actors today. But here is this black chalk. I've had this for 20 years and this is how much I've used. Okay, so you're gonna put this on your finger. All right, you're gonna make sure that the eyes are dry. Okay, pull it tight and then just go over over the eye rim. Now, let's see. All right, so this is the eye I did, and this is the eye I didn't do. It's kind of hard to tell the difference. As he gets older, there would be more difference to show because you would be able to see it better. I'm sitting here looking at it, and I can see it, but as he gets older, we'll do that because there'll be more, more surface, more surface around the pigment of the eye. But I can see it. I'll have to watch this tonight, but boy, can I see it. All right, so I can already see how that works. After the show ring, get a wet cloth and wipe that off the eye. I don't think I want black grimy chalk on my dog 24-7 in between dog shows. So I just use this again. But again, look how nice and bright and clear these eyes are. Just in this little bit of time. And if you notice, he's... He's using his eyes better. His eyes are more open, and he's yeah. more relaxed. You can see it, yeah. Yeah. right? Why? Because his eyes feel better, right? The red wasn't making his eyes feel yucky, but the fact that they were irritated right. made him feel yucky. Look at the difference. Yeah. I mean, his whole headpiece has changed. Mm -hmm. Just from, trust me, visine, get the red out, all the stuff you use when you've been out smoking pot, you don't want your parents to know when you come home. All that's garbage. All that's yuck. Don't use it on your dogs. Don't even use it on you. I am not a medical doctor, so I am not going to tell human beings to use this. <clears throat> but it seems to me if it's good for the dogs, it might be good for other things, too. Just to. Right. Let's not make that the next CNN headline. <laughs> All right. And have Dr. Fauci and everybody up there going, Oh, my God! She told everybody you clidal silver in their eyes and everybody's eyes are going to turn blue. All right, so I'm going to spin this. Okay, puppy's done. Okay. Take him down. Put him in your lap. Um, I don't know what adults are on the floor roaming, but you never, never, never have a puppy, especially one that's under nine months old, down on the floor with any adult dogs, especially springers, unless you know for a fact that everybody has met and that they are copacetic together. And even then, I would probably <laughs> want to watch what I'm doing. Right, so now we do mommy, mommy, itsy, itsy. So what I'm gonna turn around here and do, all of you guys, I can't see anything on that cell phone. All right, well, here's Kira all dolled up with her show towel. And I'll probably, it needs to stay on for how long? 24 hours. All right, so here she's sitting just very calmly, very still. There. All right, just because, just, just because I have it out. I figure I might as well use it. So I think that's probably going to be this segment for today. Let's see if I can get Kira and me both in here on this one. I know you got a bad light spot on the cell phone, but not to worry. Because <laughs> like I said, I'm going to have all this on the widescreen later. But for now, Oliver, 
and Denise and Kira and I say bye bye and oh it's four o'clock I'm gonna finish my schnauzer and it will be time for that next glass of wine because the coffee has worn off <laughs> right Denise right. you and I for that glass of wine I still got that schnauzer to finish yeah. and we'll be doing that soon enough and it, this towel's got to be on for at least 24 hours I'll take it off maybe 48 she'll live in it now in air conditioning so I don't kill her and uh, then we'll get the pumice stone off and hopefully I'll have the time and energy this week to finish that I really have to because I got to I've got to take the five blade and, and get her stripped off again. It's just too hot. And she's old, and I'm old. And we like it better when there's no hair. All right, so Denise, come on over. Have a seat here with baby boy so that everybody can say bye. Bye. Oliver. 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 Oh, yeah, right. Two. Two. Good looking girls from here. Two. All right. Bye, everybody. I'll let you know when the next segment is over here for the Pumice Stone. And please go to my YouTube channel and watch the pet grooming tapes. Noah. Noah. The big black, black, he's a tricolor. Black and white springer that goes detailed, segment by segment, inch by inch, scissor blade by scissor blade, how to do these pet trims. So know that. Be accustomed with that before you even start to touch a puppy. And I might take a puppy to a well, a well-known breeder. Right, right, and have the breeder start the puppy off right for the first three grooms, before you trail off on your own. So, bye, bye for now. Thanks for joining. Hey, if you like these videos, give me a click up. Say you like it. Subscribe to the channel. I've got over a hundred people that have subscribed. I think there should be ticker take or something. I got an email from Facebook. I don't even know what any of that means. Anyway, so subscribe to the channel. But I do know if you subscribe to the channel, then when you go to your homepage and you just open up Facebook, if I have posted a new video, bam, it's going to be there on your homepage. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go finding me and say, oh, I wonder what Debbie's been doing lately. Because boom, it'll be right there. And um, I have dry spots. I don't publish one a week. They're way too time consuming. As a matter of fact, I've got three in the can right now. In the can. That's filmmaking talk. For completely videoed, but I haven't had time to splice, edit, and do all that and get them up. And now I have this one too. So you might even find a flood where I have two days to work on all of them. But they're coming and I'll be here and I'll see everybody later this week to finish Kira's top coat work for the show rig. Okay, we all say bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Only a male springer. <laughs> <laughs> Only a male springer would let mom do something as corny as that.